you'll need 32GB of RAM to play Diablo 4 at 4K. Linsanity posts PLG record 50-point game in Steeler's 8th straight win. Severe solar storm creates dazzling auroras. OpenAI CTO Mira Murati talks about shepherding chat GPT. Japan's iSpace is making the first private moon landing. 26-year-old Harvard graduate becomes youngest mayor ever in Japan. AI boosted worker productivity by 14%. World's longest purpose-built cycling tunnel opens in Norway. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Wednesday, April 26th, and here are your top stories. Diablo 4 is just a few short weeks away from being released. Blizzard revealed in a blog post the four things your PC will need to run the game, and people have spoken out about how absurd these requirements are. The most shocking thing about those specs is what is required to play Diablo 4 at 4K Ultra settings. Running the game at that tier requires 32 gigs of RAM, as well as an RTX 3080 or an equivalent 40 series GPU. All spec sets require 90 gigs of free space at launch, a figure that will likely grow as the new content gets added down the line. According to VG247, Diablo 4 will launch on June 6 for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series 10. S minimum specs for PC require an SSD with 90GB available space with 8GB RAM. But PC Ultra specs at 4K, 60fps setting require Intel Core i7-8700K or AMD Ryzen 72700X with 32GB RAM plus NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, GeForce RTX 40 series for fully supported DLSS 3 or AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT GPU. VG247 said you can play it up to 4 days early if you go with the Digital Deluxe or Ultimate Editions. Former NBA star Jeremy Lin Dubbed Linsanity in 2012 when he played for New York Knicks, scored a record 50 points in a Taiwan PLG game on Sunday. Lin led his team, the Kaohsiung 17 Live Steelers, to victory over the new Taipei Kings. Thanks to his outstanding performance, Lin tied the record for most points scored in a game, which was first made by Simbula on April 17, 2022. As an NBA player, Jeremy Lin dropped his most points in a game on February 10th and December 10th of 2012, with 38 points each. This was also the third time this season that Lin and the Kaohsiung 17 Live Steelers faced off against his younger brother Joseph Lin's team, the New Taipei Kings. In the game, the older Lin scored 15 points in the first quarter and broke the league record with 32 points by halftime. Before Jeremy fouled out with 4 minutes and 12 seconds remaining, he had racked up 50 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 assists. He also broke Anthony Tucker's record for the most points scored in a single game while achieving a triple-double. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, said Monday a blast of super-hot material from the sun late last week hurled scorching gases known as plasma towards Earth at nearly 3 million kilometers per hour. As the Earth felt the burn of the storm Sunday, the solar storm has the northern lights gracing the sky farther south than usual. According to NOAA, the farther north, the better this show as the energized particle interacts with the atmosphere closer to Earth. Stunning images of the northern lights were captured from Canada over the weekend. Beautiful shot a number of people took to Twitter to show the... Auroras were reported across parts of Europe and Asia. In the U.S., skygazers took in the sights from Wisconsin, Washington State, Colorado, California, New Mexico, and even Arizona, mostly a reddish glow instead of the typical green shimmer. NOAA said this was the third severe geomagnetic storm since the current 11-year solar cycle began in 2019. The agency expects the cycle to peak in 2024. The program coordinator at the NOAA, Bill Murtaugh, said, stay tuned, more to come. OpenAI was building a reputation in the artificial intelligence field, but wasn't a household name when Mira Murati joined the nonprofit research lab in 2018, soon after the San Francisco lab started a major transformation. It turned itself into a business that attracted worldwide attention as the maker of ChatGPT. Now its chief technology officer, Murati, leads OpenAI's research, product, and safety teams. She led the development and launch of its AI model including ChatGPT, the image generator, DAL-E, and the newest, GPT-4.
Chat GPT's creator, Meera Murthy was born in San Francisco in 1988. When asked by the Associated Press did she anticipate the response to Chat GPT before its November 30th release, Ms. Murthy said, We had been exploring it internally with a small, trusted group, and we realized the bottleneck was getting more information and getting more data from people. The intention was to gather feedback on how the model is behaving and use that data to improve the model and make it more aligned. We didn't anticipate the degree to which people would be so captivated by talking to an AI system. Akuto R Mission 1 launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida on December 11th last year and officially entered lunar orbit on March 21st. But the flight controller in Tokyo lost contact with the craft during the final minutes of its descent to the moon on April 25th. It is the first private commercial mission to try the feat. So far, only space agencies from the US, the Soviet Union, and China have successfully landed on the moon. The primary goal of the mission is to prove that iSpace can safely land and deliver cargo to the moon, setting up for future missions. Landing on the moon is no easy feat. Chandrayaan-2, a mission conducted by India's space agency and the first private attempt by Israeli NGO Space IL, both resulted in crashes in 2019. iSpace's Hakuto R is scheduled to land on the moon this Tuesday, April 25th at approximately 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Looking forward, iSpace has a second mission planned for 2024 which will include commercial payloads with the goal of collecting a lunar soil sample for NASA. Later this year, several NASA-contracted companies also plan to carry cargo to the moon. Yosuke Takashima, 26, won the mayoral election of Ashia Hugo Prefecture on Sunday. Takashima was named the youngest mayor in Japan's history at 26 years and two months, eclipsing the previous record of Katoro Sashida, who was 27 years old when he was elected as the mayor of Musashi Muruyama, Tokyo in 1994. Takashima campaigned on providing more support for young families, free medical care for people 18 and younger, and improved English education programs. During his campaign, he garnered support from young people through social networking services with the help of his former junior high and high school classmates. Just several years ago, the graduate of Nada Junior and Senior High School in Kobe quitted the University of Tokyo about four months after entering. He then graduated from Harvard University in the United States. After receiving reports that he was a shoe in Takashima said, I want to make Ashia the most desirable city in the world to continue living in. According to new research from Stanford and MIT, artificial intelligence tool like chatbots help boost worker productivity at one tech company by 14%. After measuring more than 5,000 customer support agents in terms of issues solved per hour, the study found tech support agents who use AI tools that created conversational scripts boosted their productivity by 14% on average. More remarkably, the improvement was even more pronounced for novice and low-skilled workers who were able to get their work done 35% faster. Researchers measured productivity of these workers based primarily in the Philippines, at a Fortune 500 enterprise software firm over the course of a year. They found that in some cases, using AI trumped having real-life work experience. Customer service agents with two months of experience who used AI support performed as well or better than agents with over six months of experience working without AI. The study is thought to be the first major real-world application of generative AI in the workplace. There are many ways to explore the seven mountains that surround the picturesque UNESCO World Heritage City of Bergen off Norway's fjord-stubbed west coast. However, the newest might well be record-breaking. A three-kilometer-long cycling and pedestrian tunnel has been blasted through the base of Lofstaken Mountain, and its maker says it's the longest purpose-built tunnel of its kind. It takes a little under 10 minutes to whiz through the tunnel by bike and around 40 if strolling on foot. Filingstolstenelen, as it's known, opened on April 15 with a family day of sporting activities, following four years of construction that began in February 2019. 
The state-funded megaproject cost close to $29 million, or 300 million Norwegian kroner. To break up the monotony of the windowless tunnel, there are a variety of art installations throughout, as well as different colors and lighting to help users place where they are on the journey and offer a sense of direction. At the center point is a sundial installation showing the time of day. Let's take a look at today's vocabulary from the news of Jeremy Lin dropping 50 points. Number one, dubbed, 把点点点戏称为,给点点点起绰号. The Belgium actor Jean-Claude Van Damme has been dubbed Muscles from Brussels. Number two, face off against somebody, 准备好辩论. The candidates are preparing to face off on TV tonight. Number three, rack up something, 累积,聚集,累积得分. In 10 years of boxing, he racked up a record 176 wins. And that's all for today's Fun Day News. Be sure to tune in to our Fun Day News from Monday to Friday and click the link below now to join Fun Day for free. I'm Wei Li, your host. I'll see you next time.